Welcome back to part six of the Little Horus Drag Racing Beetle um, build. Um, if you remember back from part four when we had the car on the dyno, we couldn't get the charge cooler system working. So what I've decided to do now, I've scrapped that system altogether and in this video um, I'm going to show you um, how I've now installed um, a water methanol kit into the car instead. Um, I'll talk about some of the benefits, show you what I've done to get it integrated into the CB Performance ECU, show you where I've installed it on the car, and then the next video after this video, hopefully what that will be part part seven, blimey, um, and that part will be the car back on the dyno, and we'll see what improvements we've got when we had the car with no charge cooler, and then the difference with the car with the water methanol. Um, so that'll be part seven video, but for now, let's crack on with it. This is part six, and I'll go straight into the how to uh, install a, a water methanol kit with your CB Performance ECU. So it's out with the old charge cooler and in with the new. Um, the kit comes with a sizable pump, a storage tank, pipe work, various relays and wires. It also comes with two nozzles, a size 3 and a size 5. And you'll also need to buy an additional solenoid which doesn't come with the kit. I had to decide the best place to install the tank and pump. Uh, my first thought was behind the rear seat in the luggage area. Um, the pump is quite heavy so I opted for installing it in the spare wheel well. Um, not only did I have a lot of space in this area but it also made a lot more sense through weight distribution. Um, I made some brackets um, which I shaped and then painted and I installed the pump at the bottom of the wheel well and the tank above it because the pump is gravity fed. Next I ran a pipe um, from the tank um, to the pump out through a hole in the bottom of the wheel well. Um, I ran it under the near side of the car and back up the rear seat uh, blank uh, making sure that I also ran it through rubber grommets so the pipe wouldn't rub. From there it goes through the solenoid, runs down the rear luggage area and out into the engine bay. Next you need to find a suitable place to mount the nozzle. Ideally it needs to be as close to the turbo as possible. I removed the turbo pressure pipe and drilled an 1132 mounting hole then tapped it with a 1827 NTP tab. I then mounted the nozzle. I used the number 3 nozzle which is good for over 300 brake horsepower and it was then just a case of reassembling everything and making sure that everything was sealed and that there was no leaks. There is a green LED that you need to install on your dashboard that tells you when the system is activated. Uh, you have to find a suitable mount for this. Um, luckily I already have a perfect size mounting hole in my dash so no need to drill another. Next up it was um, time to wire the system and get everything running with the CB Performance 4th Gen ECU. The wiring side is quite straightforward as you can see from this diagram which um, Mark over at CB Performance sent me. The hard part was locating the pins on the ECU. To cut a long story short I contacted Mark over at CB who as always was incredibly helpful um, to check if my ECU was compatible with running water meth. Unfortunately it turns out that it wasn't and it needed a firmware update which Mark said he would do for me for free um, which was excellent. Um, so I removed my ECU and posted it back to Mark over at the States and thanks to the wonders of the Royal Mail, it arrived on Mark's desk three days later. Uh, he worked his magic on it and returned the ECU back to me in the UK. Now that's a 10,000 mile round journey in less than seven days. Now that is customer service taken to the next level. Um, and I should add, um, also all done for free apart from the cost of the shipping.
With the ECU um, back, the next stage was to add the two wires into your loom. Now, this is the fiddly part. Um, in the larger of the two ports, you need to locate pin numbers G1 and H1 um, in your ECU. Make sure they correspond with G1 and H1 in your plug. I did this by carefully locating the two pins and marking them with a white marker. You then have to install two pin connectors with the wires into your plugs. Ensure they sit home and be extra careful when you plug them back into your ECU that they all correspond. Um, you then connect H1 to the solenoid and G1 goes to pin 86 on your relay. Um, check the wiring diagram in this video. Um, with that done, it's then just a case of testing it that everything works, tidying up all the wires and the cables and making sure there's no leaks in the system. You now need to set the system up inside your ECU. Um, to test that everything works, you can go to the setup tab, click output test, click water method test. Um, the box to the right allows you to change the speed in which the solenoid opens and closes within the output test section. Um, you can click the setup tab and the water method tab to activate the system. Uh, you can either enter your own details or enter the details that I've done here in my system. I've got my system injecting at 3500 uh, revs per minute. Um, you can set up your water meth table however you like. Um, as you can see from my table, again, I've got the system injecting at 3,500 reps, but it's entirely up to you or your dyno guy, um, depending on your application, to edit uh, the table. Go to edits, go to water meth table. So with everything installed, um, we now need to uh, see what difference it makes to the car and the power. Um, last time we made 170 brake horsepower at the wheels with um, only 8 PSI of boost and nothing cool in the air. Um, I will have the car on the dyno in the next few weeks, so we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. So stay tuned for part 7. Um, I'm hoping for big games. Um, I won't go uh, into too much of how water meth works as there's a lot of videos already um, on YouTube but um, some of the main benefits are that it cools the air inside the inlet um, pressure system by injecting a 50-50 mix of water and methanol. Um, the chemical reaction means that the water evaporates cooling the air um, resulting in the air being denser um, which in turn means the air inside the combustion chamber has more oxygen in it. Um, this then allows you to add more fuel and advance your timing for that extra power and the methanol also adds the extra octane level so like a standard 95 pump gas becomes a higher octane. Um, now I'm not really a betting man but I'm hoping that the water methanol system is going to add maybe 30, 40 horsepower more. Um, um, then we're going to turn up the boost say probably to 1 bar or 14 psi so I'm hoping that we're going to be uh, running around 260 horsepower at the wheels but um, I'd love to know your guesses so um would be great if we could get some guesses in the comments and um, I don't know I'll, I'll give the, the nearest guess a big shout out in the next video um, right, okay, that's it for now. Stay tuned for part 7, like I said. Um, that'll be the dino run. If you've missed any of my other videos, um, please check out my channel or the build thread on the Volkzone forum, and I'll put a link in the description to that. But uh, yeah, that's it for now, and as always, I'll see you by the racetrack. I hope you like my t-shirt, by the way. This is a support um, Melbourne Raceway t-shirt. Uh, Melbourne Raceway is a grassroots um, drag strip here in the UK. It used to be called York Raceway. It's now been taken over by the straight liners. Um, the, 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 they're trying to get it back up and running um, as a drag strip. So we'll have two drag strips in the UK, which will be absolutely fantastic. But yeah, um, if you're interested, look it up. Melbourne Raceway. Find them on Facebook. Give them some, uh, some much needed support.